Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president and CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership, Bob Harvey. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Greater Houston Partnership's 2015 annual meeting. And thank you all for being here on this beautiful afternoon. And thank you to Rebecca Salas for leading today's invocation. Rebecca is a senior at Crystal Ray Jesuit College Preparatory School that many in this room are familiar with. In fact, many of you probably knew Father T.J. Martinez, the founding president of Crystal Ray, who passed away late last year. The innovative partnerships he built with the business community to help give youngsters in Houston an experience in a professional setting is a tremendous legacy that he leaves behind. Thank you again, Rebecca. For many years, the members of the partnership have worked to make Houston the best place to live, work, and build a business. All those efforts are focused on one goal, making our great region even greater. Today's meeting also gives us a chance to reflect on what everyone in this room accomplished for Houston in 2014 through your work at the partnership. Working together with pride and dedication, the business community has looked to and worked with the partnership to address our region's most pressing issues and invested in an even greater Houston for tomorrow. But perhaps most importantly, we're here today to talk about how the work we did in 2014 sets us up for great things in 2015 and beyond. As we begin today's event, I'd ask that you please turn your attention to the screens for a short video acknowledging our executive partners, sponsors, elected officials, and consular corps. Ladies and gentlemen, the generous support of our members is essential to the success of the Greater Houston Partnership and allows us to continue our work of making Houston one of the world's best places to live, work, and build a business. Please join me in thanking our executive partners, AT&T, BP America Inc., Centerpoint Energy, Chevron, Exxon Mobil Corporation, J.P. Morgan Chase, Reliant and NRG Company, Shell Oil Company. Today's annual meeting platinum level sponsor is Verizon Wireless. Our annual meeting gold level sponsors are Bracewell and Giuliani, Silver Eagle Distributors, Cisco Corporation. Our annual meeting silver level sponsors are Calpine Corporation, Crown Castle, The Friedkin Group, J.P. Morgan Chase, Sanchez Energy Corporation, Spectra Energy, Wells Fargo. Our annual meeting bronze level sponsors include Amogee Bank, Andrews Kerr, LLP, Camden Property Trust, Clear Channel Outdoor, Deloitte, Direct Energy, Haynes & Boone, LLP, Houston Chronicle, JLL, Kroger, Lock Lord, PWC, Telepson, Texas A&M University, Galveston, Toshiba International Corporation, Trustmark National Bank, UT Health. Today's underwriters include BB&T, Blue Lance Inc., Accenture, PKF Texas. Also thanks to our staging partner, JSAV, and our production partner, Vision Production Group. The Greater Houston Partnership would like to express sincere appreciation to the members of Houston's Consular Corps for everything they do to establish positive foreign relations between the Houston region and their respective countries. Their leadership is invaluable to building and maintaining our international network. The Greater Houston Partnership would also like to acknowledge our elected officials, the men and women who represent Houston at the local, state, and federal level. We look forward to continuing to work with all of our elected officials in 2015. Please join us in thanking all of our sponsors, members of the Consular Corps, and our elected officials for all that they do for our region.
Now, will all elected officials and members of the Consular Corps please stand so we may recognize you. And I'm going to go off script for just one minute and recognize one member of the Consular Corps who I read this morning will be leaving Houston later this week, and that's Dr. Luis Malpica. Uh, uh, Consul General Malpica has represented Mexico in Houston for four years. He's represented the country and people of Mexico exceptionally well, and he's been a tremendous partner to the partnership as we've built our Mexico Energy Task Force. So, Dr. Malpica, I'm not sure where you are in the room. I think I saw you enter. Could you stand and let us recognize you? Thank you, all of you, elected officials and consular leaders, for your support of the partnership and your investment in making Houston even greater. I'd also like to take a moment to thank those who held key leadership positions at the partnership in 2014. With the men and women who served on the partnership's executive committee or the board of directors in 2014, please stand so we may recognize you. And now, before we move forward with today's program, we'll take a brief intermission to allow you to enjoy your lunch. Thank you again for being here. We'll see you in just a few minutes. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce the 2015 chair of the Greater Houston Partnership, Gina Luna. Gina is a chairman of J.P. Morgan Chase in the Houston region. And prior to her current role, Gina was chief marketing officer for Chase Commercial Banking directing marketing and communications for the national commercial banking business. She has held a variety of other positions in private banking and commercial banking at Chase, and Gina has served her entire career with J.P. Morgan Chase. She's a summa cum laude graduate of Texas A&M University. Thank you. With a, you know, I'll, I'll always put that break in the script for that. So, with a BBA in finance and marketing, and management, excuse me. I am very much looking forward to working with Gina in 2015. I know she'll be an enthusiastic and effective leader and a great spokesperson for the partnership and for the Houston region. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Gina Luna. Thank you, Bob, for the introduction and for your tireless efforts. The partnership is so fortunate to have your leadership. I'm excited and honored to take the helm as the chair of the partnership, and I look forward to working with you and the exceptional GHP staff. But before we get too far, I'd like to pause and thank our outgoing chair, Paul Hobby. Anyone who has met Paul knows he truly has a heart for Houston. The partnership has made tremendous strides in 2014 under Paul's leadership. We've launched new special initiatives, including Upskill Houston and the City with No Limits campaign, and engaged in critical policy discussions about early education, municipal finance reform, and our transportation challenges. Paul is a dynamic leader who is not afraid to challenge the status quo. And he pushed both the members of the partnership and the staff to think differently. Personally, I'd like to thank Paul for the time and energy he's invested in helping me prepare to serve as chair. Paul, on behalf of the partnership and of the Houston region, thank you for all that you've done. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Hobby to the stage. For all these things and so many more, it's my pleasure to present you with the Bob Onstead Award and thank you for your service. Thank you, Gina. 
as each of you realize, when you hand one of these things off, you want to hand it up, and I'm certainly doing that. Uh, this has been a very special recognition, and I'm so honored to have the Bob Onstead Award. I can't thank the GHP board and David McClanahan specifically for putting trust in me to hold this position for the last year. I, I hope I have justified that confidence. And uh, even if I haven't, um, I'm pretty sure Janet has. Uh, you can't throw yourself into these sorts of things without a supportive partner, and I have certainly had that for being Houston's not-so-secret weapon. Thank you, Janet. Someone asked me today if I felt bittersweet, and my answer is emphatically no. I have added an active hand to a flywheel that others began spinning 26 years ago that has increased our momentum, just as Gina will increase it again this year. I will, in fact, miss the interactions with staff who without fail would improvise, create solutions, and innovate on the fly to make things work and to respond to my email through nights and weekends. I commend you, I thank you, and I forgive you if today is more sweet than bitter for you. <laughs> we all understand that Houston and its region are a wonder in many ways. Houstonians have a dynamic sense of ourselves. We hold the deep belief that we can always get better, that progress is a linear consequence of people coming together to work for it. The partnership helps that to happen. You help that to happen. You invest your time, your energy, and your effort to craft and execute a vision to make Houston even greater. So allow me a final thank you to you, our membership. I applaud you. As you heard, this past year we launched a number of important endeavors to fulfill that vision. Gina shepherded the launch of Upskill Houston, a bold visionary plan to address our workforce challenges. Jamie Roots oversaw the City With No Limits campaign to share the Houston we know and love with the rest of the world. We established new annual events such as the State of Energy, which featured ExxonMobil's Rex Tillerson in its inaugural year, and the State of the Texas Medical Center, which would not have happened without the commitment of Dr. Bobby Robbins who showcased his incredible vision of collabor collaboration and commercialization down at the TMC. The partnership also dove right into some difficult issues critical to Houston's future with Mark Watts spearheading a study of this, the state of our municipal finances and Jim Postal and Scott McClellan and a legion of others tackling the early education gap. It's a measure of our success, in fact, that we are now being asked to lead in other important areas like racial justice and other forms of public sector oversight. Through the hard work of our members, our board of directors, and all of our committees, we made a difference in 2014. We just had a great year. There's no other way to say it. As I mentioned, abundant thanks to the partnership staff for their commitment to achieving our priorities and the support they provide. I would like to singularly acknowledge Bob Harvey for his exceptional leadership and his execution of the partnership's new strategic vision. One of the things I am most proud of is the new Greater Houston Partnership Building. I know, I know, you're not supposed to get all geeked up about glass and bricks and mortar, but I am. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, and the reason is that as the partnership looks ahead and continues to build on its leadership role, it was time to find a new home that would help us accomplish those goals. We had outgrown and outstayed our current space and needed a unique venue that would allow us to bring people together and serve as the face of the Houston business community. We found that place, and next year we will move into the new Greater Houston Partnership Building. Just off Discovery Green, this development raises our profile dramatically and will serve as a gateway for business leaders from around the globe. It will be modern, innovative, and reflect the vibrancy of this community and to be a place where stakeholders in the region come together to get things done. If you remember, last year I joked that in San Antonio they remember the Alamo, and in Houston we remember the bumper sticker. Lord, just give me one more oil boom and I promise not to waste it. <laughs> Should I pause there for a second? <laughs> of course the world is changing as we speak, but no matter what happens in global oil markets, the fact is that we didn't waste it. We did some incredible things and we helped Houston set itself on a path for even greater success in the years ahead. 
We raised the bar and we raised expectations for the partnership. So I leave you with one word, Gina, onward. Thank you again for allowing me to serve as chair this past year. It's been a very special privilege. Thank you again, Paul. Before I give my remarks, we have two important items of business to conduct today. The first is the election of new board members, in which the nominees are listed on the screen. Nominees were solicited from the membership of the Greater Houston Partnership. Our nominating committee was then responsible for narrowing the list. Each member company is entitled to one vote in the board election. A proxy form with the list of the 2015 nominees was sent to each partnership member company and the proxies were submitted by those who could not join us today. All of those in favor of the nominees as listed, please say aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Thank goodness. <laughs> Will the new directors please stand and be recognized? The second item is to elect our vice chair and secretary for this year. According to our bylaws, the vice chair and secretary will advance to the chair next year. I am pleased to announce that Jamie Roots has been nominated to serve as the vice chair and secretary. As many of you know, Jamie is the president of the Houston Texans. He's held several leadership positions within the partnership, including his service on the President's Advisory Council, as Chair of the Regional Economic Development Advisory Committee, and our Membership Committee. His leadership of the Houston Image Task Force resulted in the City with No Limits campaign. No doubt, he is a true champion for Houston, and I'm so excited to continue working closely with Jamie. All those in favor of the nominee, please say aye. All those opposed, nay. Again, thankfully, the ayes have it. The nominee stands confirmed. Please join me in welcoming Jamie, the 2015 Vice Chair of the Greater Houston Partnership. With the completion of the official business of the day, Members, I want to thank all of you for being here. The Partnership's annual meeting is an exciting way to launch another great year in Houston, and your participation is so important. Working with the Partnership is a privilege and a pleasure because I love Houston. I wake up every day grateful to be a part of this community, to be living and working with entrepreneurial leaders like you. It is without a doubt the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. Speaking of family, I'm delighted that my family's here today. My husband, Carl, and my two sons, Tyson and Carson, along with my mom and my sister, and I wanna thank you guys for being here. I also want to acknowledge my J.P. Morgan Chase family. I started at Texas Commerce Bank as a summer intern and have worked here for almost 20 years. And it is no exaggeration to say I've grown up at Chase, and indeed many of my colleagues are like my family. And it's such an honor to continue the long-standing commitment of leaders like Jesse Jones and Ben Love and Mark Shapiro in service to the Houston community. As I said, I came to Houston as a summer intern, a small town girl in a big city, and immediately felt welcome. Over the years, I've come to appreciate that welcoming spirit as one of the things I most love about Houston. This dynamic city is always ready to embrace newcomers and help them succeed. Houston is a meritocracy where everyone has a chance to contribute. And I'm engaged in this community because I want to make sure we maintain that spirit 
and that Houston is the place my kids choose to live as adults and the place where they can create their own success. While there is much to be optimistic about, like every city, we have our challenges. I'm willing to bet that most everyone in this room, regardless of the type of business you're in, has recently had a conversation about oil prices. There's no question it will impact our economy. And no one has a crystal ball to tell us exactly how the story will play out this time. But thanks to the conscious effort of many of the leaders in this room who were here in the dark days of the 1980s, our economy is much more diverse and resilient. And I expect that Houston will come out stronger as a result. Today, Houston holds a formidable position among leading cities in America. For the fifth consecutive year, U-Haul International ranked Houston as America's top destination city, which tells you something right there. Picture all those moving trucks, each transporting to our doorstep ambitious people and their dreams for a brighter future. Houston's also been called the top city for college grads, the best city for young entrepreneurs, and America's most diverse city. The Brookings Institution called Houston a top five city for foreign investment, for infrastructure jobs, and as a destination for millennials. So you see, there's something for everyone in Houston. And that makes our story compelling as our economic development team goes out to recruit companies to Houston. We also continue to enhance our global reach. We recently announced that Houston is one of eight U.S. markets selected to participate in the 2015 Brookings Global Cities Exchange. This pr program will bring Houston into a network of 28 cities developing unique regional export plans and a strategy to increase foreign direct investments. This prestigious program will make our region even stronger on the global stage. No doubt, this is an exciting time for doing business in Houston. Our port and airports are busy, thriving and expanding. Our medical center continues to grow and be on the cutting edge of medical advancements. And we're making real strides to commercialize these advances in biosciences. Significant resources are being poured into enhancing our quality of life, including exciting work on Buffalo Bayou, massive improvements at Herman Park, and the restoration of Memorial Park. And like countless improvements in our past, many of these transformational projects are examples of successful public-private partnerships. But we must not take this momentum for granted, nor be complacent. We face significant challenges that re require our attention and our leadership. And there's no better time to attack these challenges than we're in, we're in a position of strength. This is what we must do to thrive. And the challenges are real, but the opportunity is even greater. We have a history of transformational leaders who set a powerful example for us to follow. They include the people who traveled into space, who worked tirelessly here inside Mission Control. It also includes pioneers who completed the first artificial heart transplant and those who developed new technology that bring our nation closer to energy independence. Houston is a place that gets it done. As leaders and members of the partnership, we have a responsibility to pull together, take on tough issues, and do what's right for the future of our city. If not us, who? And if not now, when? As we contemplate what needs to be done, we must seek solutions for all people who call Houston home. We want a city that is equitable, prosperous, safe, and livable for everyone. And when issues arise, such as the current discussion about racial equality and justice in our community, the partnership can and should play a leading role in that discussion. <laughs> Addressing topics like this are important because Houston is about the people. Our resilient, open-hearted, and open-minded residents, including those who've lived here for generations 
and those that just unpacked their U-Haul this weekend. They make Houston the great city that it is. To build the Houston of the future, we must invest in people, and the partnership will make that investment in a number of ways. First, upskill Houston. Employers tell us every day they need more workers with better and more diverse skills, but we're not training enough workers fast enough, contributing to a skills gap that impacts everyone. However, if we're able to successfully address this challenge, it will strengthen companies and our economy. It will enhance our competitive stature among cities competing to be leaders in the global economy, and it will change lives. Here's one terrific example. Jessica Hayden is a 33-year-old and is responsible for the care of her three young nieces and chronically ill mother. Her minimum wage job just wasn't paying the bills for her growing family. She enrolled in Lone Star College's welding program. As she advances in her courses, she's already vetting job offers. And these offers pay three times what she was earning before and provide benefits. Jessica's new career will mean a better life for her family, and I'm delighted she's here today. Jessica, will you please stand? But the story doesn't end there. The company that hires her and others like her will have the talent they need to respond to growing demand. Upskill Houston will only work if we have all the interested parties at the table, both on the supply side and the demand side. And the business engagement, the engagement of the business community is essential. We have great momentum, but we still have big work to do. The second way we're investing in people is through our new talent attraction effort. Launched in 2014, this initiative will utilize Houston's new City With No Limits image campaign to help recruit college graduates from schools across the country to Houston. The effort specifically targets professionals in energy, life sciences, technology, and advanced manufacturing. Houston has a lot to offer, and we need to keep working to make our city more attractive with projects like Discovery Green, Emancipation Park, and so much more. Early Matters, Houston's Childhood Education Coalition, is the third program that affords us a tremendous opportunity to invest in people and have a long-term meaningful impact. As we explored the critical element, elements of the entire workforce pipeline, it became clear that it begins at the very earliest ages. A solid, early start is critical for success in life. If a child is not reading at grade level by the end of the third grade, they're four times more likely to drop out of high school. It's a startling reality that in our community, only one in five children are graduating from high school and completing some form of post high school credential. This is the baseline that's necessary for the middle skills jobs we're talking about in Upskill Houston. We know that a solid educational foundation is critical to the overall health of our workforce system, and we must invest in those early years, including pre-K. In addition to investing directly in people, we must also invest in the infrastructure to support our people. I don't know about you, but rarely does a day go by that I don't complain about the traffic. It's a product of our prosperity that requires attention now to get it right in the future. And unfortunately, this is not a snap your fingers sort of solution. It takes time and it takes funding. State transportation funding is one of the partnership's priorities for this legislative session. Much has been said about the $5 billion of new annual funding needed to keep pace with our state's growth, and we're encouraged by the conversations happening in Austin even as we speak, indicating there may be a path to secure those dollars. Locally, 
It's time that we join together as a community to take a hard look at our region's overall mobility plan. Houston's population growth rate leads the nation, and this puts a real strain on our local roadways. Expect to see the partnership play a leading role to convene key transportation stakeholders and address this issue. And last, but certainly not least, we must invest in a firm foundation, a firm financial foundation for our city. Over the past several months, the partnership has led a comprehensive study of our municipal finances. The facts are clear. We face a substantial and growing problem that has significant consequences if we don't act with a sense of urgency. And I believe as business leaders, we have much to offer this conversation. And as citizens, we should have expectations of fiscal responsibility and hold ourselves accountable to the generations of Houstonians to come. The partnership will disseminate the facts and explain the urgency of the current situation so that voters can make well-informed decisions in the upcoming elections. <sighs> Admittedly, that's a lot to tackle. No question, these are not easy issues. But as leaders, we didn't sign up for the easy ones. The examples of past leaders compel us to be visionary and to keep Houston moving forward. True leadership overcomes adversity with a vision of greatness. This is the approach that Houston must take for the Houston of 2015 and the Houston of 2115, a place we're all proud to call home. The work we undertake today has the potential to make an impact 25, 50, even 100 years into the future. No matter the issue, we must collaborate to address our region's toughest challenges. Investing in our people is our greatest opportunity to move Houston forward, and the partnership is well positioned to do just that. To fully leverage that investment, I need each member to commit to the future of Houston and to contribute in your unique way. I'm deeply honored to represent you as the leader of the Greater Houston Partnership, and I urge you to join me investing in our future and making Houston greater. Thank you. And now I want to welcome back to the stage the President and CEO of the Partnership, Bob Harvey. I knew Gina would be a hard act to follow. Thank you, Gina, for taking on this task. And let me again say how much I'm looking forward to working with you in 2015, and I simply know that you are going to be a fantastic chair of the Partnership. And Paul, it has truly been an honor and a pleasure and an inspiration working with you this year. You brought the passion for civic leadership, the vision and the keen insight that we knew you would. And under your leadership, 2014 proved to be a great year for the partnership and for Houston. Thanks so much. And Jamie, let me add my congratulations and thanks to Jamie Roots as he begins his year as vice chair, which is, has been said, sets the stage for his leading the partnership in 2016. I know that Gina and Jamie together will constitute a strong team this year with a new focus on offense and special teams, and we're going to build on that defense. And Jamie, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got, I got, I got, I got off, got off script there, excuse me. It's going to be great. <laughs> Two years ago, David McClanahan and I took to this stage to encourage you to imagine to imagine the possibilities for this great city and for this region and for this organization. We emphasized, as Gina just did, that the future is in our hands, that the great metropolitan regions of the world, such as Houston, control their own destinies. As one of the world's great cities, we compete with, trade with, and cooperate with the other great metros of the world. And we cannot depend on our federal government or even our state government to provide the direction or the resources 
that are required to build this great city. All of you took that message to heart and shared your thoughts with David and me throughout 2013. And that began to shape a new vision for the partnership as a champion for Houston's economic development and trade, as an advocate for Houston's business community, and as a regional leader and convener on the issues that matter most. At last year's meeting, Paul Hobby and I focused that vision on nine priorities, what I often call the nine imperatives. These nine issues are at the heart of the partnership's multi-year agenda. While presented last year, they remain our priorities today. The agenda speaks to our need to continue to build our economy and attract jobs and investment, specifically in energy, but also in trade and logistics and in emerging fields such as life sciences, advanced manufacturing, aerospace, and IT. The agenda acknowledges our need to invest in physical infrastructure, particularly highways, streets, transit, and water, and to invest in people, as Gina just mentioned. It reminds us that we must ensure efficient and effective local government, government that meets our critical needs at a cost we can afford. The agenda includes making Houston an even more attractive place to live with a quality of life that is second to none, and suggests that we let the world know what a great city Houston has become. And finally, it's our goal to see that the opportunity for success extends to every Houstonian, and that every Houstonian has a seat at the table, a chance to play an integral part in building our great city. So with that agenda, we set out to see what we could accomplish in 2014, and together we accomplished a great deal. We added Walker County as the 11th county of the partnership. We introduced our City With No Limits campaign. We launched our Upskill Houston effort, our workforce initiative. We organized the Early Matters Coalition targeting, targeting early childhood development. We kicked off our talent initiative to help attract college grads to Houston. We worked closely with a, a, a coalition of business associations to negotiate changes to the city's proposed Equal Rights Ordinance, removing language that would have placed an undue burden on Houston businesses, even as we supported the anti-discrimination intent of that ordinance. We delved into the city's financial situation and shed light on the municipal pension crisis. We worked with the Texas Medical Center to develop a plan to address the uninsured in Texas. We launched our Mexico Energy Task Force to better link Houston companies with the opportunities unfolding in Mexico. We reached and surpassed our 10-year goal of adding 600,000 net new jobs in the Houston region. <laughs> We led trade missions to six countries and hosted three heads of state and over 100 inbound trade delegations. We worked to ensure the passage of the statewide transportation funding referendum, Proposition 1. Here at the partnership, we introduced 10 new councils and, as Paul mentioned, two new signature events. And on December 31st, we amicably terminated our contracts with the city, county, airport, and port, establishing the fact, if there was ever any doubt, that the partnership is independent of any governmental body. I could go on, you wouldn't want me to, but I think you get the picture. With your leadership and involvement in financial support, we did a lot last year. <clears throat> it could be said that we started more work than we finished, but we clearly moved the ball forward on our multi-year agenda. So where do we go now? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd suggest it's time for a change in focus. We must begin to judge our progress and our success based on, based on our impact, not just on our ambitions. By the end of 2015, we must be able to point to real demonstrable impact in each of our areas of focus. In Austin, that means passage of legislation in each of our top three priority areas. High quality full day pre-K for qualified four-year-olds, expanded long-term transportation funding, and competitive, fully transparent state and local incentives to support economic development. <laughs> Here in Houston, it means getting people trained and placed in middle school jobs. It means hiring college grads from distant campuses who are excited about Houston. 
It means gaining agreement between leaders in Austin and Washington on how Texas can leverage federal dollars to address the uninsured, particularly the uninsured that are trapped in the Medicaid coverage gap. It means reaching a consensus on pension reform in Houston and putting the city on a sound financial footing, and it brings, means bringing even more new jobs and investment to Houston. And after many years of advocating for legislated immigration reform, we're now faced with a presidential executive order establishing a legal employment status for undocumented workers that meet certain criteria. Assuming that the order stands, this action is expected to make as many as 200,000 Houston workers eligible for job training and higher paid, higher skilled jobs. It will, <laughs> it will bring them out of the shadows and onto the books of law-abiding employers and will help drive the Houston economy forward. Here at the partnership, we would have preferred comprehensive legislative action. But we can't ignore the opportunity, the challenge that the executive order presents as thousands of our neighbors navigate this new process. I'm asking today that the members of the partnership consider ways that you can assist as we respond to this challenge. <laughs> and before I move on, let me touch on one other issue that Paul and Gina have each alluded to. <clears throat> We're all aware of the national discussion taking place regarding racial inequality and the fair treatment of all Americans by the criminal justice system. As I've had conversations around our community these last several weeks, including conversations with many of you in this room, it is clear that many of these same issues and same feelings are present here in Houston, particularly within the African American community. There is simply no place for discrimination in Houston, and we must, as leaders, rise to the call to ensure that Houston remains a great place to live for all of our citizens. What we must do as leaders and as a community is join together in a thoughtful dialogue to ensure that the divisiveness that has torn other communities apart never takes hold here in our great city. A conversation like this requires input from across the community and leadership committed to finding solutions that are as unique as Houston. The partnership is committed to playing a leadership and convening role in that process. And as Gerald Smith, our friend and former board member, said in his op-ed a couple of weeks ago, a strong stand against injustice of any kind is the right and moral thing to do. Now, I've gone 10 minutes without mentioning the price of oil, 10 minutes. And like most of you, I had hoped we'd have another year or two of $100 oil. Uh, that would have made everything easier, uh, not easy, but easier. But alas, that wasn't meant to be. So now we have to move forward on two fronts, continuing to make Houston greater even as we react to unfavorable headwinds. I expect that you, as leaders of your respective companies, will take the steps needed to respond to lower oil prices. You don't need the partnership for that. We will stay focused on our multi-year agenda to make Houston even greater. That will include, however, suggesting that energy-related activity that isn't already in Houston probably should be. That the efficiency and effectiveness of conducting the energy business from here in Houston is even more valuable when times are tough than when times are good. And we will redouble our efforts to attract life science, manufacturing, IT, and other non-energy businesses to Houston to help our economy grow. But generally, our priorities will remain as they were, and with your help, we'll continue to move forward. Now, I'm often asked by people in Houston when my term as president of the partnership ends. There's often confusion in nonprofits about the titles of chair and president, so I always remind them that my term ends when the board tells me it's over. In other words, I work for you, the members of the Greater Houston Partnership, and all the staff members of the partnership work for you. But at the same time, we see our role as engaging you in our mission to make Houston even greater. We recruit you to the task, we support you, we occasionally cajole you, and hopefully we recognize and thank you, but ultimately the partnership is in your hands, not mine. We will accomplish what you, decide we will accomplish. We will do and be what you decide to engage in, and the sacrifices you make of time and treasure will determine our success, the partnership's success, 
which if history teaches us anything, will determine our region's success. So please take everything I have said and what Gina has said about priorities and plans for 2015 as simply a call to action, a challenge, and a request. There is so much that needs to be done, and this is the year to do it. And just one more thing before I wrap up. I don't know about you, but when folks ask me what the partnership does, I sometimes struggle to get it in just a handful of words. We're a unique organization, unique in Houston, and unique around the country. To some, we're a chamber. To others, we're known for economic development. And to others, we're known simply as the business group that works to get things done. These are all good things. But maybe it's the McKinsey training in me, but I wanted it boiled down to just two or three words. So we took a step back and asked, what image do we want to project? What expectations do we want to set? How can we capture the special spirit of the partnership in a few words, in a tagline or in a brand? Well, through the hard work of several people in this room, I think we've accomplished that, and I am excited to unveil the partnership's new look this afternoon. To help showcase the true heart of the partnership, we've put together a video to introduce our new logo and brand image, a look that reflects our unrelenting passion to make Houston greater. Houston is one of the greatest cities in the world. The economy is booming, the culture is diverse, and the quality of life here is spectacular. That's why today, Houston is known as the city with no limits, a city that truly is the definition of great. And the Greater Houston Partnership works to make it even greater. The partnership is a place for community-minded leaders who want to be involved in Houston's positive growth and influence the direction in which Houston is going. Through the dedicated efforts of our members, the partnership addresses Houston's unique challenges and champions the growth and success of our region. Houston continues to reach even greater heights and making this city a better place to live, work and build a business is what the partnership is all about. Because in today's ever-changing economic landscape, it's not enough to merely be good. You have to be great. Great at championing your city. Great at focusing on what matters. And most of all, great at making your city the best it can be. The Greater Houston Partnership. Making Houston great. Well, members, that's what it's all about, making Houston even greater. I appreciate your being here. I appreciate your being members of the partnership. I look forward to working with you this year. Have a great afternoon. Thank you very much.